Well, I grew up in the outdoor world, and when I had children, I wanted to bring them up in the outdoor world. So as soon as they were old enough to walk in the woods with me and look for sheds and shooting the bow in the backyard, teaching them to shoot the BB guns. And eventually, I was able to take my girls out on their first deer hunt, archery. And uh, in New Jersey, we have a early season, September season. So it's 80 degrees, very comfortable for kids. So we load up the uh, little DS's and iPods and give them something to do. I have a special guest tonight I'm taking out hunting. Hannah, wave and say hi. Hi. What are we gonna do tonight? Hi, Shatia. Okay. The, with the girls there, but you know, we, we gave it heck and spent a lot of hours in the tree. And, Got to see deer, see the squirrels, see the turkeys, so it was, uh, you know, they were well on their way to following in my footsteps and doing exactly uh, what I did as a kid. And I was trying to show them exactly what my dad showed me growing up. Just leaving the house, 4.30. Heading to our spot a couple, uh, couple miles down the road, do a little bow hunting. I got my hunting partners with me here, Let's see if I can... Uh, there's Hannah, there's Kelsey. Digging the girls tonight. sold deer they uh, had the adventure so it's something I cherish because I caught a lot of it on video and I'm able to go back and, and watch the video and, and see the good times and, and see the experiences we shared out there together all three of us um, I wish I had more with with the cameras getting away from the tape format into internal storage, it's it's too easy to delete. If if you didn't kill a deer, you didn't see anything exciting or wasn't worth editing, it's three pushes of a button and it all goes away. And uh, you know, there's a lot of footage I wish I had that I don't. Sorry. I definitely would have shot a lot more footage had I known that would have been the last hunt together, all three of us. To be where you are, to be where you are, to be where you are. <laughs> 
This segment is brought to you by Film the Hunt. Look for our on-site courses for tons of opportunity in learning outdoor video production at filmthehunt.com. If you were gravity, oh baby, I'd be falling. If you were tidal wave, oh baby, I'd be deranged. If you were the sun in the sky, oh baby, I'd be more crimson than I've ever been. To be where you passed away eight years old now Kelsey doesn't want to go deer hunting any longer it's something we did as a family all three of us so it stopped you know Kelsey won't go out in the woods anymore and you know I respect that it's something that she enjoyed you know, doing with her little sister so if she doesn't want to relive it that's fine but uh my time in the woods, that's all you think about. You just sit in a tree and think about it. A lot of people in the outdoor industry really came together for me. I had a good friend, Anthony Verga, make some little Hannah calls, we call them the Hannah Banana calls, little yellow diaphragms, and I uh, throw a Hannah Banana sticker on the case. And uh, really didn't know how it was gonna go over. Uh, it wasn't trying to profit in any way. We were just trying to, you know, cover the expense and, uh, and donate all the, the proceeds. Test at number 28. And uh, really, once word got out about them, I, I sold about 200 calls in less than 24 hours. And uh, Campbell Cameras also asked for some calls, so I sent them a couple hundred, and, uh, and they sold everything in less than 24 hours. They actually oversold, and Anthony had to make some more. The whole industry just kind of stepped up and people came out of the woodwork and I got pictures from all over the country with dead turkeys and had a banana calls. Really special. I didn't expect that kind of that kind of turnout. I really thought I was gonna end up sitting on you know three or four hundred calls in my basement for years because nobody really cared, nobody uh, nobody would buy them. So that uh, that really surprised me. I talked to Joe before I went out to Grand National. I told him I dedicate my my run for Hannah, and uh, we dedicate every hunt this year to Hannah and the Po family. So this one's for you, Hannah, and uh, just keep watching over us and just bless the Po family and. Uh, It's just a great moment, it really is. You only live once, you don't take life for granted. In December, just prior to Hannah's passing, my wife and I were blessed with a baby girl. We had struggled for years trying to have children, so when our daughter was born, it was it was a miracle. It was a true miracle and something that we cherished very, very much. When I got that call in February, I was sitting at my desk at work at Campbell Cameras. I think having a daughter of my own made it that much worse for me. And I'll never forget that day. Tears were just pouring off my face and hitting the desk. and I felt helpless for a good friend in such a terrible time. Several months after Hannah's passing and 
trees began to bud and new life began, that turkey season meant a lot more to each and every one of us than it ever had before. And I was so excited to dedicate my entire season, especially my Illinois turkey hunt, to Hannah and the Peel family. This entire hunt was dedicated to my buddy's daughter. Thank you, Hannah. This segment is brought to you by Film the Hunt. Get an outdoor video education right from home with filmthehunt.com. I'd heard the story, I'd, I'd known of Joe Pio I'd, through Tom for a long time and Going there to New Jersey to do that, I guess I just wasn't expecting to get that emotional and get so caught up in how powerful Joe's story was and the story of Hannah. That following spring, I started to use the Hannah Banna calls because it just felt right, not because I knew Hannah or because of Joe, but just because it was a constant reminder of why we at The Life do what we do. You know, all these hunts that we film, all the hard drives that we fill up, you know, they're memories. And I think someday we'll, we'll be able to look back at all that footage and, and laugh and, and cry and enjoy whatever emotion that footage brings us because of what I'm doing right now. Two times.
getting outdoors is such a great way of, of spending time as a family and making memories that will last. Although the hurt that Joe and his family had felt with the loss of their daughter Hannah, seeing him and his dad back out there that spring, putting that Hannah banana call to use and getting a chance to smile once again and reflect on a lot of the times that they've spent together as Joe was growing up and also the time that they got to spend with Hannah in the great outdoors is something that they will cherish and hold dear to their hearts. Our hopes are that that this episode will help the Pio family always remember the life of their beautiful daughter, Hannah. Everybody thinks you can, you know, rebound within a certain time frame. Uh, you try to hold it together, try to be a rock, try to put the happy face on, but it's the little things that will will break you. It's it's odd because it it could be the simplest thing. You go to a restaurant and they ask you, you know, table for four or three, and you want to reply four because you have for the last eight years, but that's that's not the reality anymore. So when it's really cold and I'm, I'm sitting in a deer stand and there's not a lot of action, the thought that goes through my mind mostly is, you know, I, I'm in the tree, I'm cold, but I'm dressed for it. We're about two miles from my deer stand. It's my daughter in a, in a cemetery. and it's cold. There's nothing I can do to help her. To be where you who loses a husband is called a widow. A husband who loses a wife is called a widower. A child who loses a parent is called an orphan. But there is no word for a parent who loses a child. That's how awful the loss really is.